Symmetra as a hero has always been in a state of constant rework and revision. From the very beginning, she was initially part of the support category, and later the defense category, which has since been removed from the game. This lends a parallel to just how awkwardly this hero fits in, along with having a myriad of complete overhauls that has changed her playstyle drastically. Perhaps one of the hardest characters to track in terms of compositions that utilize her, Symmetra has found herself dipping in and out of popular play, depending on the map type and what stage of rework she was currently in. Today, we're not only going to be looking at the incredibly few metas Symmetra has been a part of and supplemented, but mainly focusing on her multitude of changes and reworks that have made her the area control juggernaut that she is today. This is the evolution of Symmetra. During the early development of Overwatch, the game was originally known as Project Titan, which birthed many class and hero types from their developer think tank. Potential playable heroes such as Reaper and Winston were featured on this list. Shortly after a pitch to Activision, Project Titan was subsequently cancelled, and later became Overwatch, the hero shooter we were given back in 2016. During this Project Titan phase, several heroes were shown off in their neophyte form, including Jumper, who would go on to become Tracer, Assassin, who would go on to become Genji, and Guardian, who ended up as Mercy in modern-day Overwatch. Another one of these concepts included a character called Architect, who bears a striking resemblance to the Symmetra we know today both looks-wise and abilities-wise. She was originally envisioned as wielding an Arc Welder and Blaster as her choice of weapons, with the ability to deploy three sentries and a shield generator. As we know today, her weapon turned out to resemble a beam weapon that uses hard light, as it is described in the lore. Eventually, her entire kit developed to utilize this hard light style of utility and weaponry, which is unique to only her. Through voice lines in-game, we know that Lucio and Symmetra have somewhat of a history, leading back to a company named Vishkar, which invented the hard light technology. What you Vishkar will never understand is that people should be free. What you call freedom is an illusion that causes more harm than good. All lore aside, let's take a look at the roller coaster that Blizzard took Symmetra's design through. To begin, Symmetra was a completely different beast than today. Firstly, her proton projector slash primary weapon would lock onto the enemy with a beam and gradually build up damage over time. This not only forewent the need to aim, but made Symmetra an incredibly deadly close quarter combatant, with the ability to stay locked on despite any AD spamming or dodging that the victim would try. Symmetra's secondary fire, her orb, used to be able to entirely pierce targets and barriers, and did a flat set amount of damage on pass-through. As we know, this is pretty different from today, but we'll get into it later. Her deployable sentry turrets, funnily enough, originally had three charges, which was then subsequently increased to six at a later date, then reduced back to the three that we have today. The main difference, however, is her turrets had a tremendous cooldown of 12 seconds, making them set up anywhere no quick task. Symmetra's first ability, a relic of its time, used to grant a temporary shield to a nearby ally, giving a small buffer of blue HP on top of their native hit points. Her ultimate ability is a familiar one, being a teleporter that she was able to place anywhere on the map and allowed any teammate to enter the corresponding teleporter that was placed in their spawn, giving quick access back to the battle after an untimely death. Symmetra in this state lended herself to being a strong defensive character, which would make sense given that she was put into the now defunct defensive category of heroes. However, as time went on, people caught on to the regular sneaky turret placements, and resetting her car wash took a large chunk of time. Along with her lack of any mobility options made her a weak duelist once players learned to aim. This ultimately led to former game director Jeff Kaplan to make a statement that Symmetra was, quote, one of the least played characters back in late 2016, insinuating that some major reworks were coming. Eventually, this was made true. Six months after the release of Overwatch, Symmetra's first major rework arrived alongside their inaugural Winter Wonderland event. Introducing a second ultimate into her kit, it allowed her to place a shield generator instead of a teleporter, to use in scenarios where teleporting the team from spawn doesn't prove as useful. According to Blizzard themselves, they noted that players would, quote, often switch off Symmetra once they found themselves in a situation where her teleporter wasn't as useful. Along with her new ultimate option, her E ability, or the temporary granted shield, was replaced with an active ability called the Photon Barrier, which was an oval-shaped barrier that advanced forward once cast, granting some offensive power to her already powerful defensive kit. The barrier, while it did break on first contact with anything, would prove to be able to be utilized in creative ways, such as forcing and ulting Farah to kill herself with her own splash damage, or managing to block a diva bomb at the last second. In addition to these new abilities, her existing primary fire range was increased by 2 meters, 
from 5 to 7, to hopefully push the hero as a more attractive offensive pick. Her turret count was then increased to 6 maximum, and the gargantuan cooldown of 12 seconds was reduced to 10. It was around this time that people started to ask why Symmetra was in the support category, as she is completely unable to heal her teammates, only providing various utility. After reworking her, Jeff Kaplan stated in a developer update that was meant to address popular community topics that they were not looking to make Symmetra a healer, but to make her, quote, more viable. What we are looking to do is make her more viable in more situations. I think right now she's perceived as being okay or acceptable if you're playing on defense on a first point um, or early in a match. Um, other than that, we really don't see Symmetra as being super viable in a lot of other situations. After a two-year radio silence from Blizzard on the topic of Symmetra, her second rework was released. On June 26, 2018, Blizzard released the 1.25.0.1 patch that would not only completely rework Symmetra yet again, but include a proprietary looking for group menu, and finally the reworked Horizon Lunar Colony. Regarding Symmetra, her primary fire had changed to a beam akin to Zarya, no longer featuring a lock-on mechanic, but one that forces you to actually aim and track the enemy. To account for the increased skill required, the maximum damage after ramp-up time was increased to 180, and can now build charge off of enemy barriers. Her secondary fire was changed as well, to a projectile that bursts on impact, dealing impact damage and splash damage as well, however no longer able to phase through entities. Her sentries had also been reworked, changed to a throwable projectile that can be sent across any degree of space, allowing for Symmetra to throw them behind enemies on the fly, rather than relying on a heavy-handed setup before the fight even begins. Symmetra's teleporter had moved from being one of her ultimate options to an ability, replacing the situational barrier that took her E slot before. As it is today, her teleporter ability is on a 10 second cooldown, and instead of auto-spawning the entrance in your spawn, it appears wherever Symmetra was standing when she casts the ability. This change alone allowed for incredibly creative plays, such as teleporting your entire team into and through the window on Li Zhang Tower, teleporting your three turrets through the portal as a turret bomb, and quickly granting the ability to completely bypass some map choke points, such as Hanamura. Finally, and arguably the biggest change that has come to Symmetra was her ultimate ability, which is potentially the grandest in terms of scale Overwatch has ever seen. Now, in Instead of a shield generator or a teleporter, she can splice any teamfight in half using a map-wide barrier with 4k health. Just enough for the enemy team to not want to bother damage it, and just let it exist through its 12 second duration. Whilst a static barrier, it provides enough coverage to command the direction of a fight in any static battle scenario, such as King of the Hill and 2CP maps. Now, basically a fully new hero, it was Symmetra's time to see more of the limelight as her abilities and strengths were realized. Famously, throughout Symmetra's various stages, but most notably during her support era, Symmetra mains and one-tricks alike found themselves under fire as being throwers. He probably left because we have a sim one-trick on our team. I would leave too if I had a sim one-trick on my team. Since Symmetra didn't exactly bring a counter to the table, and not many people knew how best to utilize her kit. Can you please go Mercy or Lucio? I can go Lucio or Mercy as well. But you can't say Symmetra main and use Symmetra on attack. Much like Genji and his I need healing meme, picking Symmetra for the longest time was a sign of giving up and not taking the match seriously. Yes, Sim, can you switch up, please? You've had your chance to prove it. What have you done? Things like putting troll teleports at the edge of cliffs to bait your teammates into walking through to their demise was a popular tactic for those who chose the character at the selection screen for throwing purposes. It was in Blizzard's best interest to reverse the mentality the community had formed around this character, and these reworks did exactly just that. That being said, yes, she still isn't a perfectly rounded character that can be used in all situations, but really what DPS hero is. Every one of them will have their weaknesses and strengths, and Symmetra definitely has hers. Professionally, Symmetra was really only brought out in niche situations. One of these situations is bypassing an enemy's defense on a map like Horizon Lunar Colony, like in the example shown here, which depicts the San Francisco Shock using her teleporter to go straight to the point and set up a defensive hold of their own, which ultimately led to the Shock winning. Another display of power was when DM used Symmetra's reworked ultimate to cut Anubis point B in half, allowing him to shield dance back and forth to avoid incoming damage, all while ramping up her beam and melting barriers and enemies alike. This played out much like when Sure 4 used their Photon Barrier to force Soul Dynasty off of the point, creating massive space, as if a planet-sized Reinhardt had just appeared in front of their face. 
The creative play potential is through the roof with Symmetra's newest rework, allowing never-before-seen combinations like Maywall and Sim Teleporter to be used in tandem to achieve high ground quickly, like seen here on Hanamura, performed by the LA Valiant. Not to mention Symmetra's primary fire as well, which is a beast by itself. Not only does it charge the longer you target enemies, you can build up easy charge by focusing enemy barriers as well, and then transition onto enemy players. Truly a unique playstyle change introduced to the character. It leaves Symmetra in a still niche but strong position as a pick on various maps and surprise compositions. All in all, even Symmetra One Tricks themselves would agree that the changes made to the hero were all or mostly beneficial to the character. Before, she was only really picked for the first push on defense, but now she is competitive enough to continue being played for the second point and beyond as well. Previously, running an attack Symmetra was unthinkable, but now, being able to utilize her powerful teleporter on such a short cooldown not only allows Symmetra herself to move around the map freely, but her entire team as well. Sporting fantastic spam damage, she fits in especially well with compositions that include other spam characters, such as Junkrat and Torbjorn, and fares very well on maps where chokes can be completely bypassed by her teleporter, such as Hanamura and Lijiang Tower. Now we await any changes that may come in Overwatch 2, and how Blizzard will adjust her kit given the data they have on her pick right now. Hopefully the team can strike a balance between not too annoying, but not completely useless in a team setting. And that's all we have for this episode of Meta Archives. What do you think of Symmetra's current state? What was your favorite revision of the hero? As always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. This video is made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. Massive thank you to everyone on this list, and shout out to Jason, B, Brendan, QB, Foxy, Mauve, Pachanas, Pin, Sierra, Shampoo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, and Marco for being Diamond supporters. Thank you all for your continued support. If you want to support our channel and get info on unreleased videos, check out our Patreon. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Jonah. Thanks for watching.